when I woke up to the Indie Fringe Theatre, I feel just a homecoming. It's the strangest sensation. I love this building. Um, yeah, it's like I'm in home. Because you've got to admit, God's a little odd. He's a bit of a sod, if the truth be told. I mean, look at the works he doeth. Behold, famine, injustice, decay, disease, destruction. These are not good ideas. I'm Monkey Poet. Uh, I do stand-up poetry and solo plays. And I'm from Manchester uh, in the UK. Adam's eaten the apple. Adam's eaten that apple. I told him not to. I said he can do whatever he wants to. Take a piss in the sink if you have to, but don't touch that apple. Do you know what it's done? Someone described theatre as um, theatre is what happens when two uh, unique weather patterns hit each other, and that is what's on stage and the audience. The audience are unique every single night, and the performer is different every single night, and it's when those two meet, that's the live art aspect of it, that's the thing that you don't know what's going to happen. Uh, this is called an open message to all faiths and religions. What I like about Fringe is, yeah, it's non-mainstream. It really is. Not. You're, you've got a freedom with Fringe to express and experiment, which you don't have ordinarily in the theatre. Sell the churches, smelt the crosses, eBay the crooks and the clothes of office. Um, the mainstream is a very narrow, very financially focused uh, output. It's a business, it's an industry, and so it needs to be that, whereas Fringe, I think, allows the room for the experimentation to take place. Plug the jewels and the estates, act now before it's too late for the wars that you've caused, for the hatred and the grief, for the homophobia and the massacres that are done for your beliefs, for all of the hypocrisy, for the torture in your name, for fiddling with children and never shouldering the lane. What I found about Indianapolis was it was just the most friendly, welcoming place. Indianapolis was where I ticked two dream boxes. Uh, one, I had my first absolutely oversold smash hit show, which was just brilliant. My pure heart has been betrayed by my thingy. <laughs> Secondly, I believe um, every uh, performance, two refunds were given out to people who were offended by what I did. She s me in the morning until the end of night. She s me down an alleyway while out of plain sight. Her tongue flickered around my and it wrapped around my and when it was all over, she stood on shaky legs. We should be together, she said. You'd never have to She wiped my on my lips and introduced herself as Frank. <laughs> That's based on a true story. And I was thinking, Lenny Bruce and Bill Hicks are looking down on me right now going, good job, you've done it, you've done it all. You are a smash hit sensation and you're quite offensive. <laughs> monkey poet, monkey poet, monkey poet. There are two answers to this and I'm gonna give you one. Um, um, the, two, the, the answer is, I think quite close to here, there's the Creationists Museum. And that was opening up when I was coming here on tour. And I went, no man, we're all monkeys, and I just happen to do poetry. Monkey poet. Uh, that was it. As simple as that. Without Fringe, I wouldn't be here. It was Fringe that told me that this was a viable thing to actually make a living from, that people were prepared to pay to see my poetry, which is an amazing thing in itself. Take this chance to wipe the slate clean of paedophilia, intolerance and inquisition. And you know, when you die and you meet your makers, you might even be forgiven. You pay a little bit of money, you take a chance, you're not, you're not sure what you're going to see. Uh, it's either going to be brilliant or bad, and if it's bad, it's still going to be brilliantly bad. It, it's a beautiful experience. Mm -hmm.